Fire can destroy lives and property. It can destroy hopes and dreams. Well, this was the dining room here, and we're standing in the kitchen, which is where the fire started. We are conditioned to fear fire, to react to it, to extinguish it. But fire can be a tool, and like any tool, the correct use of fire can have very positive results. Our, our primary purpose for lighting fires is to benefit the, the wildlife habitat through the use of fire. Most of these ecosystems did evolve with fire. The plants are adapted to fire. In the absence of fire, the ecosystem gets out of balance. Before European settlers arrived, fire was a natural part of the environment. Lightning strikes ignited ground fires, and Native Americans intentionally set fires to attract game animals. Burning removes excess debris and stimulates growth. When fire is suppressed, some plant species can proliferate and eventually dominate a habitat. Applying fire methodically to enhance or control a particular habitat is known as a prescribed burn. It may be to stimulate loblolly pines in East Texas. Maybe to promote food for wildlife in the Trans Pecos. It may be to suppress grass and remove undergrowth in Central Texas. There is a strategy in igniting a prescribed burn that controls the fire. On the downwind side of a tract of land, a backfire is set inside a fire lane. This backs slowly into the wind, creating a black line. Next, the flanks are ignited, which also slowly creep toward the center. Finally, a head fire is set, moving with the wind. This allows the fire to burn out and consume itself. We're standing at the uh, Eckhart North Burn Unit on the Balcones Canyonlands National Wildlife Refuge. Our objectives for this burn were to kill about 50% of the juvenile junipers in this woodland that's between two different grasslands. And as you can look out through the woodlands, you can see that we pretty much achieved those objectives. Texas Parks and Wildlife, the Kerr Wildlife Management Area over in Kerrville, has done a lot of research over the years on prescribed burning in the hill country. The late Donnie Harmel and Bill Armstrong, pretty much the granddaddies of burning in the hill country. And we've relied on their research results to implement our own burn program here at Balcones Canyonlands. When the Kerr Wildlife Management Area was first purchased in 1954, it was basically a solid cedar break. It had big mature cedar all over the area. We conducted some food habits on cows, on sheep, on goats, and on white-tailed deer and found out nothing like to eat cedar. So in, in the mid-1960s, we came in and we cut the cedar off the area. By 1972, new regrowth cedar had begun to sprout all over the area and we cut it off at a cost of about $8 an acre. By 1979, nothing yet had learned to eat cedar, and it was cedar was growing back again on the area, and we were going to have to cut it off again, but this time it was going to cost us around $30 an acre. So in 1979, in an effort to control that regrowth cedar, we began to reapply fire to the area. To mechanically control most of this cedar, you're, you're talking about anywhere from 10 to 20, even up to $30 an acre to get that done. Burning, on the other hand, can be done probably on the average, depending on what size acreage you burn at a time, for about $250 an acre. Cheapest burn we've conducted out here cost us 25 cents an acre to actually conduct that burn. This pasture was burned in February of this year. Uh, we had rested the pasture prior to the burn. There was about 1,200 pounds of grass out here, and that's grass about that tall. Uh, we ran the fire across the pasture, 
And you can see these cedars right here were easily killed by the fire. But if you look at this plant right over here, this is live oak, you can see that we didn't harm the overstory live oak. I first heard about burning in 1988, but it wasn't until I attended a seminar in 1990 at the Kerr Wildlife Management Area that I really heard Bill Armstrong go into prescribed burning in depth. And it was at that time that I really thought, I need to try this on my ranch. I would say I've saved probably thousands of dollars because I paid to have the cedar cut back in 1991. And if we hadn't been conducting these burns, I would be facing paying that all over again. Landowners should never attempt a prescribed burn without proper training and checking with county officials about current restrictions on burning. If you've ever tried to put a fire out, you probably poured water on it. To learn more about prescribed burns, the Kerr Wildlife Management Area is a good place to start. Understanding the function of soil moisture in cooling that fire and the temperature of the fire can be an important thing for you to know when you're designing a fire for your particular piece of land. These free tours are usually conducted the first Friday of each month, from March until October. When we first started our burn programs out here, I think most people thought we were crazy. And as a result of, of the economics of, of cedar control with fire, a lot of people now are practicing using prescribed burns to control regrow cedar and to actually make their lands more diverse with vegetation. There's nothing like actually getting out and being one with the land. That's what burning is, you know. It's just, it's definitely 100% hands-on. The best satisfaction is to come back later on, even in the spring, and see how well things cleaned up and just how uh, healthy things look. That's, that's the best satisfaction.